uh, March 16, 2022, regular meeting of the Royal Oak Downtown Development Authority. Um, at this time uh, is the time for public comment. Uh, so if you would, uh, when you're recognized, uh, just come up uh, and give us your name and let us, uh, let us hear from you. Yeah, Mr. Holbrook. Good afternoon, my name is Frank Colbert, and uh, I'm here on behalf of our building at 408 South Washington. We, I've been here maybe eight, six times in the process of trying to make you aware of this alley situation in the alley getting, the public alley, which is to the west of our building. Um, we were here a couple of months ago, and I know that money was allocated for a survey. The survey was completed. That's nice. Okay, we need that pavement. Uh, we have no pavement in this alley. And I understand a lot of it's being on account of the uh, improvements from Baker College. And Detroit Edison will do something someday. But all that they're going to do is patch the alley. And right now the alley is it's just atrocious. Uh, there is no pavement at the north end of the alley. Uh, the rats are having a field day, and the sewer is collapsed at the north end of the alley. Um, it doesn't meet ADA. We're about two feet below the doors. And I, and I realize the year is moving along, but uh, I can only encourage you to move ahead and get this under contract. I know the city of Royal Oak rebuilt two alleys on Main Street last year. And the other one is probably still in the works. Um, but don't forget about us, you know. Between Atessian's building, my building, and the fifth, Stagecrafters, Imaginate, um, we pay maybe three quarters of a million dollars in property taxes. It's a public alley. I know there's private land, the private parking lots, which are adjacent to this public alley. And we can't do anything about the private land, but the public alley, if you could move it forward and get it on the agenda, get it scheduled. Um, is it a 2022 event? I don't know. But let's definitely get it for a 2023 event. And before Detroit Edison dumps their money patching the alley, somebody should talk to them about contributing towards replacing and repay, you know, uh, participating in this replacement of the pavement of the public alley. Um, we'd like to see the dumpsters removed from the public right-of-way. There's two of them. We have one of them. We can put ours in the building, but there's no point in us putting ours into the building if Atessian doesn't put theirs in, into their building. So this is something that needs to come from the city of Royal Oak, and uh, I would encourage you to stay vigilant in this project. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else want to address this body today? At this time, if you have an item on the agenda, you'll be able to address that. Okay. If not, I will close public comment. Before we go any further, um, I'd like to uh, welcome a new member to the uh, Downtown De uh, Development Authority, uh, Director LaGrasso is here for the first time, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Great. All right. Uh, that being said, uh, I'll move on to item number three, approval of the meeting minutes from January 19th, 2022. I make a motion to approve. Motion by Director Rosbeck. I'll second that motion. Second by Director Keith. Any uh, comments, questions, or additions or deletions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that is approved. Uh, item number four, expense items. Uh, for everyone's knowledge, these expense items are 
uh, for the board's uh, information, informational purposes only. No action is needed on these. However, if you do have any questions or comments regarding these items, now would be the time to address those. I'm seeing none. Um, okay. Well, quick question. Director Roswick? Yeah, do we have to approve the Main Street now or is that just informational? Yeah, I was looking for actual action to authorize uh, the downtown manager to uh, attend. Um, We've done that in the past, but mm -hmm. uh, since this would be a first time, I thought we'd bring it to the board for authorization. Uh, as he's indicated in the memo, um, registration is uh, really being covered by the county. Uh, Oakland County is part of the Main Street program, so uh, I, d I don't have any objection to it. Uh, and we have sufficient funds, uh, and we haven't spent a lot in uh, travel um, uh, this year. Um, so I, I see no objection to it. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Director Rosbeck. Second. Second by Director Yesbeck. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. Okay, item number five. Facade Grant 317 South Main. Uh, well, very basically, the uh, Infrastructure Committee, and, uh, on behalf of the DDA, has uh, met uh, with the petitioner. Uh, the name of the business is Give Thanks Bakery, uh, going into the former uh, Herman's Bakery site at uh, 317 South Main. Uh, they have submitted uh, uh, the necessary materials for the board's consideration. Uh, the Infrastructure Committee did, is recommending uh, the facade application um, in an amount not to exceed $10,000 or 50% of the actual project cost. Uh, you'll see the uh, in your packet uh, the improvements that are being proposed uh, by the petitioner. Um, basically, uh, and I'll let them explain it in a little more detail, but uh, it includes signage and facade improvements to both the uh, west facade along Main Street as well as uh, uh, signage and facade improvements along the east facade. This did have to go to the city's historic district commission uh, because the property is in a local historic district. The historic district commission did uh, issue a certificate of appropriateness uh, for uh, the facade improvements um, and that they would have to do that in order to have exterior improvements made on a building that's in a local historic district. The one item that the uh, board, uh, I think uh, I sent some emails out today and there's a printout in front of you, uh, the rear facade um, uh, that's in the packet uh, is displayed on the screen. The signage there um, is a little different than what went to the Historic District Commission. Uh, you'll see the, the handout uh, in, in that regard, and I did confirm that that was what was in front of the Historic District Commission as part of their review. Um, you also note that I did provide you with information that that uh, proposed uh, configuration doesn't does not comply with the city sign ordinance um, but they have the option to either appeal to the uh, Planning Commission to receive a variance uh, they could modify it uh, in some way um, they have options to proceed the real reason that I would like the board to consider either or today is so that they if you're happy with either design um, that they don't have to come back here as part of a future review if they chose to go with the one that's displayed there or the handout depending on what actions uh, taken. Um, we've delayed this waiting to get it through the Historic District Commission and things so it, if you're happy with either design I think you can move forward with the uh, recommendation from the Infrastructure Committee. 
if you have objections or would want revisions, I would suggest you point those out today. <clears throat> Okay, is there anybody here from uh, Give Thanks? Yeah. Did you wish to address the board? I'm happy to. Um, uh, although Tim, I think, summarized, uh, summarized it well. Um, I, I brought these, these uh, boards. I don't know whether the, you can have those around if you want to see them. This is what we currently have. Um, and this is what we are proposing which is what's up on the screen. Just a small correction to Tim's um, explanation. This is actually what we took to the historic commission at the meeting. And then when we uh, came up with this, what I would call more of a mural design, uh, it created such enthusiasm um, that, we, uh, that they said, yes, we want that. Uh, but now we're running into a bit of an issue with the city. So we'll see where we end up. So if you can give us the flexibility to do one or the other, that would be great. Um, then we can just decide when we... Yeah, that's, that's the one we've got for the front. That's the front, yeah. That, and that's, that's, that doesn't change. Yeah, and then this, this was what went to the infrastructure committee on Correct. the rear. That's the only distinction. And that's also the one that went to the historic. So the historic has seen both and has approved both. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'll see if there's any questions for you. Okay. Uh, any question for the petitioner first? None? Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. A second. Okay, motion by Director Rosbeck, second by Director London. Of course, any affirmative action at this point would be based on something that may happen in the future with the building department and so forth. Yeah. Our action is based on uh, so if we can get this portion of it taken care of, they won't have to come back to us okay. at a, a later date. But it will be contingent upon the host getting approvals from the historic district building department. And so, do we need the motion to state that, or you've got that? Okay. No, you're approving. You're you're approving the facade grant subject to city ordinance requirements, and yes. if they get the waivers, they're good to go. If if they modify it to comply, then they're good to go. Okay. And just uh, just to let you know that the uh, infrastructure committee did review this. This is what we saw, plus the front of the building, which the gentleman just showed us, and we were supportive of that, um, and uh, looked for approval on that. So. I do agree. The mural is much nicer, with elevated. I would agree. Yeah, I, I hope the city. Hopefully, stand. they can uh, work their way through that. Yeah, it's going the twenty-first century place. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Anything else on this item? Okay. So I have a motion on the table. You have a uh, second. I will, and I have a second. Okay. Uh, if nothing else, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. Mm -hmm. We would love those. <laughs> Sweet the deal. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, item number six, Royal Oak Taco Fest. Uh, uh, we want me to run through yeah, start, start through this, please. Uh, the, the business marketing committee uh, did meet with uh, Mr. Witt in regards to a uh, proposed festival uh, that that is entitled the Royal Oak Taco Fest. Uh, you should have uh, attached copies of the information that uh, Mr. Witt provided to the business marketing committee in your packet. Um, as part of that, the business marketing committee uh, is recommending approval of the request uh, with an allocation uh, for two years, uh, the years 2022 and 2023. Uh, basically, the event would occur over the July 4th weekend, the 1st through the 4th. Uh, in addition to the materials presented to the Business Marketing Committee, there's also a uh, draft agreement that's attached as Exhibit B or Attachment B. Um, 
And then based on some discussion since the uh, committee meeting, uh, there was a modification that I emailed out in regards to the agreement uh, earlier today. And I believe you also have a copy in front of you. Um, rather than allocating uh, $75,000 over both years uh, uh, to the project, the first year, or to the event, uh, the first year, 2022, would have a allocation of 65,000. Uh, and the second year, 2023, would have a total allocation of 85,000. Uh, that would be broken up into a sponsorship amount of 45,000 um, uh, for specific items, which again, you should have a copy of those handed out uh, to you in your front of you today, listed there totaling 45,000. Uh, the remainder of each year, 20,000 in 2022 would be to cover in city services and 40,000 in 2023 for city services. That's the modification that occurred from um, what the draft agreement, what the committee saw. Um, I'll stop there and see if there's any questions of those and, and then we can. Okay, uh, we're gonna start with uh, questions from the board for Mr. Twain. Seeing none. Okay. I know Mr. Witz is here. Uh, did you wish to address the board, sure. Mr. Witz? Yes. I just want to thank the board uh, for their consideration on short notice, uh, relative short notice, and the meeting with the BMC committee as well, uh, just to present an exciting event uh, that. I think we'll bring thousands of folks here on a relatively slower uh, weekend on the 1st through the 4th. Um, and just, I'm, I wanted to step up and answer questions, but I think it's a dynamic theme. It's an event that's had a proven track record in other locations. Uh, the gentleman who helped found it, John Bedanchek, is in the room and wanted to introduce John. and. Uh, uh, their past success uh, that they've had in Independence Township and Canterbury Village combined with the uh, location of Royal Oak, uh, which has been you know, a proven successful venue for numerous events, along with our track record on event production and marketing, I think uh, provides a, a great uh, team that's worth the investment. I want to let the DDA know that the money that they're investing is going to be leveraged uh, by an additional uh, approximate quarter million dollars of other investment sponsors or risk on, uh, on admission fees. So the event budget will be well beyond the uh, money allocated more in the $300,000 range. So in, in the case with all the events that we've done uh, with the DDA, the DDA investment has never been near the entire amount of the budget. It is always supporting something uh, that you know has other revenue resources or investment into uh, into the program and the variation on the uh, you know on the amounts uh, on the back end to help with city service city services are just there we think there are some unknowns uh, that may come into play in 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 2023 that wouldn't be there in 2022 but the investment that the city has given to the event programming expenses remains a flat 45,000. Uh, each year, so I think um, that's a you know a quick overview. I, I'll say one more thing: we get approached on doing events, whether it be in Royal Oak or different venues, and we're we're very careful in what we decide to pr pursue and present. And uh, this is a new one that just made a ton of sense, uh, and think uh, can be very successful. So thank you for the opportunity to be here and. I can stay for any questions as well. I also bought, I should say, the venue. I brought maps if you haven't been emailed. The venue is the same uh, footprint as Rock and Ride, so I can hand these out. And there's a, a deck I can hand out as well. The agenda. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, so the, the venue's up there, and then we had a deck as well. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a footprint that uh, does not take up the closing of either Maine or Washington. 
It also uses the streets one less day for setup than rock and rides. Uh, there's not as many uh, tents or electric generators that, that have to uh, you know, go into play. Uh, so we actually are using the streets one day later than rock and rides for setup and the parking lot one day later. So it has less impact than rock and rides does. And we've checked in uh, with key stakeholders uh, at the end of the event on 6, which is Oak City Grill, and have them situated outside of the event footprint at their request, as well as been in good discussion with the businesses on 5th Street about including uh, everybody in on all nights of the event. So uh, I think that's, that's good for initial remarks, and, and if there's any questions, I'm, I'm okay. here. Okay, we'll see if there's questions here. Any uh, questions for the petitioner here? I'm just going to make a comment. Sure. I don't know how to begin, but I'm so disappointed in this board. This Consumer Marketing Committee has asked for <clears throat> money for um, music in the park, which is once a week in the summer. And all we wanted was one or two um, food trucks. Denied every year because the Restaurant Association didn't want food trucks once a week for families to come down and enjoy the downtown and organic setting. But yet we give him thousands of dollars, what, half a million dollars a year to run weekend festivals, which don't bring sustaining customers to downtown Royal Oak on an ongoing basis. He closes, he decides he doesn't close street, but I can't access my alley. My employees and my, my store, we have to park in the structure every weekend he has a festival. It's closed this, I see it's closed, the alley's closed this weekend. It's, it's a slow weekend in Royal Oak, so you really want to spend $100,000 to bring people in a slow weekend? And the restaurant thinks it's okay. It's, I mean, there's, there's Mexican restaurants on Main Street, so it affects their business. And we're a landlord to him. I have to pay rent every month. Every day I'm paying rent to, be a land, to have a business in downtown Royal Oak, but yet we give him money. It's just so backwards. He should pay us, if he wants to have a festival, he should be get, paying us money to use our, our parks, our parking, to use everything, but yet we give him a half million dollars a year. It's just crazy, and all I wanted in a, to my marketing committee was a few thousand dollars with food, food trucks for Art in the Park, for a weekly thing for families, denied every year from the Restaurant Association, but yet this is allowed now almost every other month a festival that closes the city down. I don't, I don't get your thinking, it's to the point where now it's utterly ridiculous. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, one one comment just related to restaurants. Uh, Royal Oak restaurants will have a 30% uh, discount to participate. Many of them want to do specialty tacos. We also heard from the president of the Royal Oak Restaurant Association who sent a personal email in favor of us doing this event, Carrie O'Neill from Rock on Third. We've talked to many other restaurants, including Lily Seafood, uh, uh, Luigi's Restaurants, Beppe, uh, the, the Chris Pelli's Bakery. Uh, many are in favor, and any restaurant, including that we'll be reaching out to the taco restaurants to offer them a special deal and discount to, per, you know, to participate. So there will be an outreach and uh, offering there, and I will not, I will just make state that for a fact, but not respond to any of the anything else on the comments so. thank you any other questions uh chairman i think not at this time thank you okay okay uh questions comments anything director yesvik yes i'm i'm going to have some comments but i'm i'm going to make a motion to support this uh festival <clears throat> So I can do that first and sure. can discuss it. I'll, I'll second it. Motion by Director Yesbeck, second by Director Rossman. Uh, Chairman, before we have the, the motion that was included in your packet was written prior to the additional submissions uh, that were handed out today. So I would suggest that you modify that to include the wording as amended. Um, in including the submissions of attachment B and C because B and C in the agreement uh, were uh, not available until today. So with the amendments of changing the allocations per year and then the two attachments. So I would just suggest that you 
uh, add to the wording I suggested at the end of that resolution. You didn't understand that my motion did include <laughs> did not an amendment that. to the, so I'll just make that clear. Um, so yes, my motion is the the latest modification to the to the two year agreement. I second. Okay. And, and I would also point out that the, the vote requires a majority of the board, so it needs a five-person affirmative vote. Okay. Director Yasmin. I just, um, you know, I understand what, what uh, Director London is saying. I, I, <clears throat> I, I hear her, but, but I, I think, you know, the distinction, the st distinction is that we're not giving money to John Witts. What we're doing is giving money to the downtown. This is, yes, uh, John Witts and, and, and his company is, is putting the event on, but the, the money is not for him. It's, it's to, for sure it's to generate but a successful... Director Lund, let, let him finish, and then you, I'll come back to you. It's to generate a successful event in downtown. Now, it, clearly, you, you even stated that July 4th is a, is a very bad weekend for us, very slow weekend. And unfortunately, we've had a lot of slow weekends over the course of the past couple months. And, and uh, until probably winter blast and, and uh, this bar crawl, the same practice day bar crawl last week, we haven't, it's, it's been scary how, how much in, inactivity we've had downtown. So these events, in my opinion, are the best thing we do for downtown businesses because it, it, it relates to people coming to town and, and directly depositing money into the businesses' cash registers. I think it, I was extremely happy that we are, are trying to reinvent these types of events to be more inclusive with the downtown dollar programs. I, I, I know some retailers benefit more than others and, and with the redemptions, but but I love the inclusivity. I love the fact that Winter Blast was on, on the other side of town because it benefited some of the businesses that maybe don't feel it as much during the fall arts, beats, and eats. I mean, Royal Oak is best when the downtown is, is activated and these types of events, you know, activate the downtown. And, and the fact that this particular company is behind a majority of these events, I think speaks more to the the track record of, of their success with these events rather than just the you know individual being able to to, to elicit money from the board it, it, the alternative would be going to look for people that do these types of events that we are not familiar with that we don't know uh whether they have the capability that that uh, this company has shown so i'd rather go with a proven winner than than with somebody that 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 we don't know um you know, the inconveniences, yeah, there's inconveniences, but we got to find a way as businesses to capitalize on the, the number of people, the marketing, the exposure that these these events bring. I mean, and until this company puts on a, a, a crappy event, I'm, I'm going to be pretty, pretty supportive uh, because that hasn't been the case. And, 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 you know, I think my comments are pretty similar to, to what I said when Pride Fest approached us because it's the same type of thing. It's let's bring in people and, 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 you know, see what we can do with them. Then it's on us. When they bring the people, then it's on us to capitalize. You can't, um, your business shouldn't be sustained only be from events. So the city needs to think of other things besides just an event to bring people to downtown. It should be a destination in and of itself. So those events don't bring people to my retail store. They may bring people to a restaurant, but they're not out shopping. In fact, it's a disruption to my moral business, and now these are happening all the time. That's my point. Now, I want to point. Oh, and the reason why we've been slow, it's, I even talked to my customers, it's the parking problem right now where I look is, is after 32 years of being in business, I've never had so many people call me or come to my store, 90% angry over the parking. I can't come to your store unless someone drops me off at your store. We have, to, we have to solve this parking problem, and that's one of the main reasons. But you can't run a business successfully in any city in the country and saying, I can only survive if I have an event. That's, that's, the, that's a recipe for disaster. Your city should draw people in based on the types of businesses you have and your your culture, not just in, because you've an event. Because those people coming to his events, they're from the, tr the Tri-County area, they're not coming back. They only come for events. They're not saying, oh, I love this, I'm coming back. 
I'll come back for your event. They're not your regular customers who sustain you as a town. Thank you. Director Rossby. Um, I just want, can we clarify um, attachment A um, with the restaurant participation incentive? We have 20% and John just said 30%. I'd like the 30% to be in our agreement um, for the exhibit space for any Royal Oak based restaurant. And then wanted to just see, is there a charity component to this one or no? Is there thoughts around that? I think there is, I thought I saw. I didn't see one. Okay, let's uh, one uh, one at a time here. We'll have Mr. Witz uh, address that question. So, on, yeah, on page two of the attachment. So, 100% would be 30%. So that would be that would be a uh, a typo there. So it'd be a 30% discount. And I did not have my email access for the time that that got written. So my apologies there. In addition. Um, the, there will be nonprofit organizations working all beverage areas, so our projection, and they will be, uh, we'll reach out to Royal Oak Community Organizations first, as we always done, and I would say, and we'll report back to you after our projection would be the nonprofit donations would be in the $20,000, fifteen dollars to $20,000 range for Royal Oak-based nonprofits, which is not a small number. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Director Yasmin. Yes, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm in total agreement that we can't survive on events alone. And if we get to that point, then we're all in trouble. I'm. Uh, I think this is is just a, a a part of what the overall solution has to be to to get more activity downtown. I think everybody knows. I I I push. I want somehow to get this retail back on its feet as much as anybody. I, I think I've been clear about that. Uh, with regard to, to uh, food trucks, I think food trucks are, are, for whatever reason, a way to attract local people to come to the downtown, uh, you know, and, and to, to do that. And I've talked to a couple of retailers and they said, like, with, with uh, together with like a sidewalk sale concept or a midnight madness or something like that, which is Birmingham does it very effectively. I love those ideas because it, just like events, it activates the downtown and, and brings people. So I'd, I'd be 100% supportive of that. I don't agree with the restaurant association that food trucks takes away from the restaurant business. It brings people, so by definition, it has to help your business. So I'd love to explore more things like that that we can do in addition to the events. But to me, the events um, show off, showcase Royal Oak showcase what we have in the downtown, showcase the businesses. And I think that's the, the uh, to me, the, the purpose and the benefit of, of the events. Thank you. Okay, I'll just quickly comment. Uh, I, I, I'm glad that uh, um, Director London brought a couple items um, to the table today uh, and concerns. And I think at some point, um, those concerns are going to have to be addressed, but I, but to be for clarification purposes, I think what we're going to need to do is get some cooperation with the city commission in terms of addressing some of those concerns because some of the parking issues that you've discussed um, have not come from this table. No, I know that. Exactly. And these events also, um, many of those are coming from the commission table also, whereas the DDA is just playing a, um, in a sponsorship type role or reimbursement type role, um, whereas the event itself is, is coming from the commission table. So I think we need to somehow get your concerns, which I echo some of those same ones that you have. Um, and, and get that across to maybe to the cave mission table in some way, shape, or form. I think it's been one day in my store and they'll, yeah. they'll hear it. Yep. So uh, that being said, I mean, I, I, I will support this motion. Um, I, I agree with a lot of uh, Director Yesbik's uh, comments. Um, uh, I'm in favor of, of the foot traffic and, and getting people to come to Royal Oak. Uh, and if we, if we get them here, then yes. 
He's correct. It's our job to keep them and, and to uh, get them to come back. Um, and, and that falls on us. So um, um, I think the, the, the media attention, uh, along with the foot traffic, um, is um, well worth the sponsorship at this point, of which um, a lot of this sponsorship is reimbursement costs to the city. Um, so it's kind of like moving money from one pocket to the other mm -hmm. um, in a way. So um, for those reasons, uh, I will be supportive of this. Um, any other comments at this time? Seeing none, we do have a motion and a second on the table. And at this time, I will call for the vote. Um, so all those in favor of the resolution, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. And this motion will pass. Okay, uh, item number seven, uh, Winter Blast 45 day uh, review. Uh, just a little oversight to your agreements for sponsorship uh, do, are started to require a, a meeting uh, with the board after an event occurs to see if received public uh, or, or comments, both positive and negative. Uh, I, I know there are some materials that were included in the, the packet as a summary, but I believe Mr. Witz also has some others he'd like to present to you uh, as part of the meeting. Okay. Um, well, I think we'll start with you, Mr. Witz, and then uh, bring it back to the table at that point. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I just want to start uh, with just a little bit of a uh, small defense of, of, the, uh, of the value of events. I, I'll, I'll wait till you guys have passed that. I just want to clarify some things just for, you know, related to the, to the value of events as well as since our other events have been referenced. Um, just want to state that Arts, Beats and Eats has been a neutral event on the taxpayers and this body in its history. In fact, it has earned more money for city parks on a net basis, probably in the hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars of plus range over our history. It has not had a negative drain of one dollar on a net basis to the city support. The money has been returned from parking revenue, so I just want to state that for for the record on events. And I also want to state that I have a history working with the Oakland County on their Main Street program on, on you know, this, uh, DDA board best practices and, and events and promotions have been listed as best practices by Oakland County Main Street. Uh, and I appreciate the support. It's, it's a part of promoting to downtown. It can't be the only thing, but the events that we've been involved in have had in the 20 to 25 media partner range. Uh, when we go through this deck, which is, I know what I'm here for, um, you know, you'll see a tremendous amount of editorial coverage uh, that the investment alone, um, you know, for a commercial for the city and just reminding people all the coverage being so positive and our events have, have, have featured that and is reflected well. So, okay, yeah, I am, I'm just point. making an inter yeah, introduction you. and clarifying okay. a couple things for the record. So in the deck that I just, uh, you know, handed out that the logo and name incorporation for the DDA, um, we put, we showed, uh, as we had discussed uh, with the city, the word Royal Oak in the title of the event. So it says Winter Blast Royal Oak, that is our logo. So that logo was out there. We showed that as logo and name incorporation. We also had an ice sculpture that we added that had the uh, Royal Oak logo on it. I s included in there our website inclusion with the Royal Oak logo and the, and the downtown logo. Um, we have uh, social media posts 
And again, to make the point I just made, the winter blast media analytics uh, were off the charts. We have averaged in our history maybe two or three million dollars of positive editorial coverage. For Winter Blast Royal Oak, uh, we had $67 million, $67 million of editorial coverage. We were covered in stories by the Weather Channel nationally. Uh, we were picked up by Yahoo News nationally. And because of all the media cycles of the event moving and everything, our local media coverage was in the $13 million range when the, our best ever in history was $6 million. And that is valued by Sisson Media. It is a professional service where we actually send a report to the DDA that lists every story. And if you had a chance to look or click on those stories, they were all positive. They all showcase families, local businesses, the farmer's market, all things that make the city uh, a great place to work, play, live. And uh, I have such pride on, on this particular point, but it's the same thing that occurs at our other, our other shows. Our promotional media and advertising recap is there. Uh, there's a screenshot of the TV advertising with the Royal Oak logo and the downtown logo included. There's an example of the Detroit News ad with logo included as well. And there's a listing. Uh, we are still have not received our full value of TV radio, but it's going to be in the several hundred thousand dollar range that the city was included. Uh, social media examples follow in the deck where we mentioned the downtown. And, um, and then there's some photos of the event. Um, despite cold temperatures on the first couple of days with some wind chill, uh, we had really solid crowds, several thousand on opening night, up to 25,000, 30 on Saturday, hitting 45,000 on, on, uh, on uh, Sunday. My wife could not at 2.30 on, in the afternoon on Saturday, could not find a table on Main Street to, to have dinner. Um, so just stating, and that's with 16, 17 food trucks in the event, and Rock on 3rd and Lockhart's were at capacity literally from open to close uh, on the event. Um, just talking business impact, the amount of Royal Oak citizens were in the thousands, um, had the chance to talk to many of them. And uh, the city also had the benefit of a skating rink staying for several weeks after, um, which was part of, part of the value. I am extremely grateful to this board. And uh, you, you saved a Detroit event tradition. Um, we have learned a lot. And, uh, and we put our heart and soul into it. One other thing I'll mention, we did not promise this board nor the commission a snow slide. We spent, you know, probably $32,000 on adding that element because we wanted to and we had the opportunity to do it. And uh, again, our overall budget for the event, we will, we've sent a, a budget into the city, which was part of our contract. We will have lost over $50,000 in putting the event on. And we do, did that with the, the most, uh, you know, joy we could ever have in losing at an event because of the relationship with the city and because we wanted to live up to all the eyes that were on this event and the move. There were a lot of eyes on it. And uh, I know uh, Commissioner uh, LaGrasso represents Henry Ford. I want to recognize Henry Ford for their support of that, that event and other stakeholders. M3 Investments from Royal Oak stepped up and, and helped and, and we had other sponsors. And I think part of the benefit of our track record that Commissioner Yesbeck mentioned is that we have the ability to bring in companies to help support an event that has free admission. That was a free admission program. And, uh, and that, that's what we were trying to shoot for you know, with, that, with the event. So it was just so much value and so many of the, the citizens of the city got to get out with their families and that was, that was enjoyable. And there is a, a recap. We are gonna sit down with Commissioner Fenton or excuse me, uh, Deputy uh, Assistant City Manager Fenton, and, um, and go through uh, you know how to streamline this and and uh, make sure it's successful for all parties. And we look forward to that recap. We had zero incidents. Uh, uh, Hennep met with the police department. There were no incidents, and they were they managed the event with only five police officers at all time. 
on the community side to just answer the question before of uh, Commissioner Rosbach, we raised 27,000, excuse me, we set a record for our Special Olympics fundraising. The Polar Plunge raised uh, $23,000. A Royal Oak Police should be recognized as their jumping team or Polar Plunge team uh, had raised $7,000 alone. Uh, officers who jumped in for Special Olympics and we had other Royal Oak Community Organizations benefits, so our total nonprofit giving was nearly 40,000 from that event. So um, just so many wins, and, uh, and again, I will stand by this being an invaluable tool for promoting the downtown of, of the utmost proportion of media coverage. The city owned the media for a weekend and, and several weekends prior, so. Okay, Thank you. Uh, Director, yeah, it's hard to tell, but in the third a photo on the third page from the back, is that, it's hard to make out the individual, is that you going into the polar pool there, plunging? No, I have, I have history in Detroit going in, but I did not, uh, I, I, did, I was willing to jump to the $2,000 donations, and someone came up with $500, so I, I did not jump, but. Uh, just, just an idea moving forward, I think we should condi condition all further support on John Witt's <laughs> jumping in the ice pool. <coughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, does anybody have any questions regarding the Winterfest program? Yes. Director Osmer. Just really quickly, your number, I think it's number seven in your, um, your list of things um, that you're relating to us. I mean, what, it sounds like the rink, while it was a great success, is, was somewhat of an inconvenience for the vendors at the farmer's market, based on how you wrote that. So is there some thoughts around changing that for next year? Yeah, there was some, but in me, I went in and talked to some of them, and at the end of the day, there was actually an enjoyment of the fact that they could see the skating and people could comment, the interaction with several of the vendors I talked to was not negative. But to your point, you know, just to give you a highlight of what we're proposing is that we look to be meeting with the city to propose moving the skating rink to the center of the new downtown park and running skating there in front of Henry Ford's amazing facility for uh, a three month period, kicking off ice skating with the tree lighting and having shop and skate programs taking, uh, if you purchase something at a Royal Oak real estate, uh, uh, retail store, bring your receipt and skate for free. So shop, uh, you know, shop for the holidays, shop and skate, shop and dine, a lot of interaction. And uh, I think the skating rink would, would be a great addition, uh, you know, to the winter landscape, you know, of the park and would solve uh, the issue because I'm sure, uh, to your point, Commissioner Rosbeck, not every vendor, you know, would have been satisfied that you know, had to walk an extra 500 feet for parking that might be used to that mm. west side parking. So I, I just think it would be better serve the city to be longer and to, you know, to be in there. I was at the Oakland County, uh, state of the county address yesterday and ran into DT Energy and there was strong interest from DTE to potentially support shore power. Uh, might cost you some, some volts uh, over from the mm -hmm. Henry Ford hookup, but, uh, <laughs> um, but they were interested in potentially supporting the uh, powering of the rink in the park. So that was a nice conversation I had with their head of government affairs yesterday. <coughs> so there was a, a positive thing, but that's just an answer to the future on, on what it could look like, uh, Commissioner. Yeah, I'd like to second that on the, the ice skating rink. I mean, I went and we skated and things and the height, the height and some of those challenges. I mean, I do think it would just, and the park wasn't ready, obviously, you know, but I think going to the park would be a huge better focal point of that, you know, rather than being on the side a little bit. So I think that would be a strong recommendation for next year for me. And the idea, our thought to the city is to run it on a temporary basis and see how successful it would be, make the investment for a one year investment. And then if it was successful, then the city could investigate, a, you know, creating a, a permanent infrastructure. Uh, so it could just be an annual switch uh, versus paying whatever it would be for, for a three month period. So. Okay. Uh, if you. nothing else, I'll wrap this review up. 
Okay. I like this. I have to say, I, I enjoy this this write up. I feel like we get a similar thing, but Abe is more like this. I like the I like the email detailing up things and what you're improving. It's always good to see the uh, improvement year from year. Well, uh, we we hope it uh, the winter blast rail oak is is here for many years to come. Okay, um, we don't have to deal with this now, but I was wondering if consumer marketing, when they did their agreements with Julie and other parties, is whether they should have this caveat in there to have a 45-day review, or if that would be helpful to consumer marketing or not. I agree. No, it would. So it'll be something maybe we could just add to their contract. I, I think all of our contracts, yeah. if we're doing sponsorships like this, should have a 45-day review. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Thank you. Thank you for your support today. Very much. Thank you. Okay. We're going to move on to the next item, item number eight. Uh, Royal Oak Historical Society requests for funds. Uh, yeah. The uh, Business Marketing Committee did receive a request uh, from the... Uh, Royal Oak Historical Society in regards to the uh, Memorial uh, Day uh, breakfast that they put on, um, ha have put on at the farmer's market for uh, several years. Uh, I believe they skipped a year or two because of the pandemic. Um, and they uh, are asking that the DDA consider a paying the rental fee on the farmer's market. Um, that is a new requirement under the farmer's market operation for users of the facility to pay the rental fee and, and all uh, users pay the rental fee. Uh, it's been free to the historical society in the past. Uh, so they are making that request. Uh, and the business marketing committee is recommending approval of the $2,200 rental fee on their behalf. Uh, the committee also uh, is recommending an additional $800 in order to provide uh, free breakfast to uh, first responders, uh, military personnel, uh, and those in need. Um, so that's the Business Marketing Committee's recommendation. I know uh, Chairman Safaya and uh, Director Yazbek were part of that discussion, so they may have additional items. Um, I don't have any. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is a, a community event that's been going on for, I think, 30 plus years. I know that there are other um, businesses that um, donate uh, funds and product uh, to this event. Um, this is just something that the city had a change in policy that they were going to um, charge everybody for this rental fee uh, from here on out, um, which they've never had to do in the past. Um, like I said, I know <coughs> others participate, and I think this is something that we um, we should should be involved in. To tell you the truth, I know uh, I think Holiday Market even donates the sausages for this event. They've done so for a long time. Um, and I think uh, um, this is just an event that we should carry on. I, I make a motion to approve. Motion by Director Rossman. I'll second that motion. Second by Director LaRosso. Um, Does anybody have any Mike, questions regarding this? No, just from a Director resident, Rossman. just from a resident um, perspective and a, and a person who has children in the school district this is a this is a big deal. It's an important event for the community, and um, while this is a change in city policy, um, I think we should support these types of events. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. If not, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. Okay, I see we have our team from Siren here. 
Um, if Daniel can uh, walk us Daniel want to start this? Okay. Yeah, so, <clears throat> excuse me. As everybody up here at this dais knows, with respect to Director Legasso, um, I am relatively new to the position about two months in. Um, in that first two months, I've really taken a an approach to reviewing everything that we spend money on, and that includes our marketing uh, with Siren and their social media addendum that the board approved last September. Um, those two contracts put together. Uh, what I'm basically asking for, and, and they are asking for this contract uh, amendment, is to get an extra three months to continue to review that relationship, to continue to receive their services, because they've done a pretty great job in my first two months here. Um, and then ultimately take a further fine tooth comb to make sure that the relationship as it stands makes sense still and is still a budgetary allocation we want to continue with. Okay. Um, just for clarity, did, is this, did this three month period, I don't know if you know, <laughs> so I'm not sure I'm directing it to the right person, but is this a second extension? Yes. yes. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Can I, can I Absolutely. You can come up and tell us anything you need to tell us. Hi. Hi, everybody. So good to see you. Um, Director Lagrasso, hi. I'm Lindsay Walenga. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Siren. We are a strategic communication firm, and we're located just on the other side of downtown. Um, so our annual contract that has the, the base annual contract, which has strategic communication council, um, media relations, key messaging, and um, public relations advising uh, is up on March 31st. The, um, so the three month extension would extend that contract for three months and bring with it the social media and newsletter addendum that we have also been operating. So essentially, we had a 12-month contract that is up the 31st, and then we've been going three months at a time for social media and newsletter services. Um, we're combining those into one contract for a three-month extension. Gotcha. Thank you for that explanation. Thank You're you. Welcome. And just to provide further clarity, doing that would align us with the fiscal year that the city and the DDA follows. So our fiscal year, July 1st to June 30th, best practice is typically to align our contracts with the spending habits there. All right. Thank you very much. Director Sophia, yes. if I could. Um, we also have, um, so my colleague here, um, Kristen Bujold, she is the account um, director for the work with the DDA, so she works very closely with Daniel um, on a daily, weekly basis. Um, she and I have put together an impact report um, for the calendar year of 2020. Um, Kristen has printed versions of that that I'd like to hand out to everyone. Um, and I'm wondering if we could maybe have 10 minutes or so to walk you through that. You mean 2021? I'm sorry, 2021, thank you, yes. That's the good we did 2020 last year, no, nobody wants to go there again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wanna to go to 21. <laughs> maybe 2022 is not so hot here. Yeah. <laughs> just hey, it's only March. There's a lot of months ahead of us. But as we're looking at a three month extension and then as we come up on July 1, you know, we'll be talking about um, does it make sense to continue with the scope of work and the partnership that we currently have? Of course, we would like to do that, um, and we think it's in the DDA's best interest to do that. But, um, you know, looking at these two decision points, um, it makes sense uh, to reflect on, um, you know, what our strategy is and, and how far we've come with it. So if uh, we could have 10 minutes or so, we'd like to do that. Yeah, just for clarity, you said... July one. So this three month extension would we'll take, take us to that. To that. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. So um, we'll start on page three. Um, the executive summary here talks about the overall big purpose of our relationship with the downtown development Lindy, authority. Can, yes. Can I pause you for sure, I'm just sorry. a quick second? Ahead. Yep. And Director, this, you guys. Right? This, you know, is, is relevant to the moment. I'm, I apologize, but. Um, I, I, I was just wanted to suggest, in, in uh, as a takeoff from from what Daniel said, um, would it make sense to, because it, we've been putting these things kind of piecemeal together while we're waiting <coughs> for the 
arrival of, of Daniel and the downtown manager, would it make sense to, to maybe uh, assemble a, a, a joint committee to, to review everything that we put together in association with Daniel? We get to you know uh, learn more about him and, and what his comfort level is with some of these things, and um, and then and then come back and, and you know look at things like this and, and just. There's a big uh, budget for social media marketing, right. all, all those things, three three hundred thousand plus. So maybe we can, uh, I think, you know, maybe a couple members of the okay. consumer marketing committee and, and the business marketing committee, and, and then we can take the time to really, you know, look yes. at, at so, these details. So I I agree with what you're saying, Director Yazbek. Um, however. I know what Lindsay's thinking, that we're on a little bit of a time crunch here, and we're looking at a March 31st date. So my recommendation would be to move forward with this three-month extension and give that committee a three-month period to do due diligence before the July 1st Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. Extension. That's exactly what I meant. I didn't okay. mean put this off. I meant... Uh, support. I would support this three-month extension, and this would be for going forward for the for the uh, for the next fiscal year. Perfect. As yeah. long as we're all on the yes. same page with that, mm -hmm. nobody has objection. I think that would be our best avenue. Well, in that regard, perhaps you should make a motion to do the extension, and then if you want to give ten minutes, you can give ten minutes to do the impact. Okay. So, I'll make the motion to extend. Whoops, sorry. I'll make the motion to extend um, the two contracts for th through the three months. Um, I just had a question, though. So the annual report's coming out of that because we just finished up, correct? Okay. Correct. Yeah, it was removed from the scope with the assumption that the next annual report will be included in the next 12-month contract. Correct. Okay, great. So I approve. Okay, so I have a motion by Director Rosbeck, second by Director Yesbeck, and this is to move forward with Siren for the three month extension. And then we will talk about the committee and how we're going to move forward at that point. Yes. Are, are you good with that? Perfect. Okay. Okay. Uh, so. Motion's on the table, and I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? And that motion passes, and the floor Thank is you. yours, Lindsay. Thank you all. We greatly enjoy working with you, so we hope to continue that for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, it's good from time to time to reflect on what we're doing and why. Um, and uh, generating and supporting a strong relationship between the DDA and business owners and residents of Royal Oak is the main purpose behind what we're doing here. Um, generating that strong relationship and building trust. Um, and the way that we do that um, is to communicate very important information clearly across all of the DDA's communication, public relations, and marketing channels. Um, and also tell positive stories about the businesses in Royal Oak um, and the meaningful experiences that can happen here. So that's kind of the, that is the basis of the relationship that, that Siren has with the Downtown Development Authority and has had for the last couple of years. Um, if you look at slide four or page four on your, in your packet, um, these are the three main goals that were identified um, last uh, during 2021 um, during the strategic communication process that we engaged together. So um, many of you, if not all, um, were at that strategic communication session. I think it happened last summer. Um, and out of that, we identified three main goals for communication and public relations for the DDA. One is to clearly and effectively communicate key initiatives and programs. These are the initiatives and programs coming out of the DDA. These are also the ones that are, that are um, uh, tangential to the DDA. So parking, for example, obviously that decision came out of the city, but since it affects downtown businesses, um, educating the public on, on the system is something that we're working with Daniel on and talking to Daniel about. Um, making sure that your business owners and your residents and people with eyes on the uh, downtown Royal Oak area understand what's going on here and have the opportunity to engage. 
Um, and then generating positive stories, of course, about downtown Royal Oak. Now, here's one of the main reasons that, well, for both of these goals, but um, it's very important that we actually have all these channels activated and that Siren is managing social media, the newsletter, in addition to media relations, getting TV stations here and writing the messaging about all of it. Because we have, when we have an initiative, um, when we have a positive story to tell, or when we have a um, campaign coming out, like Centennial Commons, for example, um, we can disseminate that information across all of the channels cohesively and seamlessly, which is really important for consistency of message and in order to generate trust with your audience. Um, and positive storytelling has been part of that. One of the things that we've been doing is telling the story of business owners. So. Um, you know, getting a TV station into one of the salons to tell the story about the founder and, you know, just do a really nice visual segment. And then also sharing that story and highlighting them on social media in different ways and in the newsletter. So that salon owner feels really supported by the DDA and builds a lot of trust and goodwill between the two of you. Um, Establishing closer relationships with all Royal Oak residents, and this is done, again, by communicating really clear information. We also have the intent of, or there was the intent of doing an NPS survey to gather community information that's still on the docket. We're working with Daniel on figuring that out. Now, I don't want to take you through too much in depth because you do have the report, so you all can look at it in depth yourself. Um, Slide five does show that because we have all of these channels activated, communication and PR is very strategic for the DDA. And this is the way through strategy, owned media, shared media, earned media, and some paid, we're able to um, comprehensively and cohesively communicate on behalf of um, the DDA's goals and priorities. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it over to Kristen to give you just some highlights from stats in, on the different channels. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me find where I'm at here. Um, so media results, which I believe is page 12. Um, so as Lindsay mentioned, a huge focus has been supporting local businesses and getting attention from consumers, residents, um, people within the area, our target audiences, um, and getting them to come to Royal Oak um, through positive storytelling. So. Um, here on this page, it just kind of highlights the growth that we've seen from 2020 into 2021 um, and the audience reach as well. Um, if you click here, there's also a full report that you can take a look at to see all the different coverage. There's, you know, TV coverage that's featured, local restaurants, salons. Um, you know, we've done a lot of campaigns with the social district and downtown dollars, you know, just as different things that the DDA is doing to encourage people to come downtown. Um, and then the next page, 13, just kind of highlights some of the businesses that have been featured in local news coverage throughout 2021. Um, and I do also want to highlight, it's not included in this report, um, but it was from uh, January of 2022, and it featured a number of, of business owners, and the article focused on why black entrepreneurs are feeling the pull to downtown Royal Oak, which is huge as far as diversity for, for the downtown area. Um, so that was uh, in January. We can send that along if, if you haven't had a chance to look at it. Um, I want to move on to social media. Um, one really key aspect that we approach social media with is operating as a strategic communication channel as a way to inform residents and consumers about things happening and clearly communicating on these channels. Um, a huge focus for us has certainly been the growth of Instagram. Um, when we first started working with the DDA, there was about 2,700 followers. We now have, honestly, this was as of the end of 2021. Um, I think at this point we have over 8,500 followers, and this has primarily been done with very little paid content. Um, it's a lot of organic content. and. You know, what I've noticed is that people are coming to this page as a resource. Um, they're using it as a way to learn about the different, the unique businesses that are in downtown Royal Oak. Um, and I find a lot of people are kind of gravitating to Instagram, um, you know, maybe versus using, using Facebook. So this has been a huge growth opportunity for us. Um, and then certainly, um, I just want to go to 
On page 20, you can take a, you can take a deeper look at this. Um, but this is important. It just shows the different feedback that we're receiving from business owners and community members when we do post content on social media and the feedback we're getting. Um, so that's an important um, thing to note as well. Um, and then the newsletter. Um, you know, we have a really strong following of over 21,000 subscribers. So, you know, what we've really been trying to do is maintain that list uh, with quality content. And you'll notice here that we've been able to maintain an average open rate of over 30% um, with every newsletter that we send out. And that also includes, we'll sometimes send a secondary email throughout the month that might focus on, you know, all things, different things happening. I know we did one leading up to Winter Blast. We did one leading up to St. Patrick's Day to highlight the different things that businesses are doing um, to celebrate those specific events. Um, just to go back to the media page really quick, I wanted to note that <clears throat> 29 million audience reach in 2021, this was entirely earned media. So this was without wire releases. We're not paying to put a press release out over PR Newswire. When you do that, you get like an automatic 100 or 200 hits on you know random websites across the country. This is like one by one earned media coverage. Um, there's been a lot of television coverage and um, a lot of really high quality storytelling that has featured businesses in the area. I also want to take the time to applaud um, the board uh, and uh, you know DDA leadership on the use of your channels to support local business owners. This is huge and it's not something that every downtown area does and it gives Royal Oak a distinct advantage in that you have power in your communication channels that you have um, a really high quality downtown for people to visit and you've invested in, the, in building strong communication channels and then offering that to business owners, is, it's huge um, because these business owners don't have the reach that you do. So when you open your doors up to allow them to be featured on your channels, it's, it's a, um, an excellent way to generate goodwill. Um, so just to... Um, kind of uh, recap and, and look forward. Um, as we look to the next three months and then, and then the next hopefully 12 months after that, um, we wanna continue communicating clearly uh, with consumers and with business owners in Royal Oak so that no matter what the weather brings or um, you know, uh, what decisions are made, at administrative levels, um, you can maintain trust with your residents, with your consumers, with your business owners, um, and continue generating goodwill through your communication channels. And we hope to continue being the partner um, that helps you do that. Thank you for the three month extension, and we're hoping to spend another year with you after July 1st. Um, really quickly, this mm -hmm. was a great report. Um, in terms of content, I mean, um, do you believe that some of this growth that we've had on the Instagram stories is due to the videos that we're doing now or versus, um, or just because we are kind of opening up to tell people about city things and also, you know, we're, we're being more inclusive with our channels. Yeah. I mean, what do I, you think? Yeah. And I'll let Kristen comment too, but it's a multi-pronged, um, uh, effect. Um, so one, there's consistency. We, you know, we're posting the same number of posts generally each week, um, and the, the photos have a distinct look to them. You know, we have a team member who actually goes out into Royal Oak to take photos on a regular basis as part of our engagement with you guys. Um, and uh, it's the way that we're telling the stories. It's what stories are being told, and then it is staying on top of trends. And something that we've been talking to Daniel about is, you know, does it need to be production level videos, or could it be more, um, you know, casual level videos? That it, because right, video content is a thing that's really important. And so we're continuing to talk to, with Daniel about what the right strategy is for that. But consistency and quality of storytelling um, is like the foundation that a lot of organizations struggle to achieve. And that has remained steady for the DDA through the last 12 months. 
Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else to add, Kristen? No, I think that sums it up. Okay. Yeah, it's we have a good mix of you know videos and posts and spreading it around to all different businesses. Um, so as Lindsay said, it's it's a multi pronged approach. We need to keep doing all of it. Also, just to note, um, you know, you have a large following on Facebook, but Facebook has become kind of a negative place. It's really important to communicate information there. Can't, it's a channel that can't be ignored, but we are finding more people going to Instagram for positive stories. Um, so I think that is also generating some of the growth. Thank you. Director London. Yeah, I just want to say I do feel everything is brought to a higher level since you've come on board and the consistency Thank of the storytelling you. and with their videos. But my other question is when you take um, pictures of stores, mm -hmm. and not even just my store, just in general, you don't mention the store, and I know some people say, even say where this is from. I wonder why you don't say that's from, because that would help mm -hmm. the store and help mm -hmm. the person, the consumer looking at it. Like, that one person said, said that recently, like, well, where, where's this at? Sure. Um, do you have an answer to that? Um, yeah, I think a lot of times when we use a photo, we're talking about a few different businesses that fall under that same category, which might not be why we do, but it's certainly something that we can consider doing in the future. Uh, or even just tagging all the different businesses that are part of the post. So if somebody were to click on it, they can go to that specific mm -hmm. page and, and see what the business is. It just is, happened yeah. recently, and I don't remember the post, but it wasn't my store. Where someone said, well, where is it? Somewhere. Sure, yeah, sometimes it's because, for example, we might do a post about cafes. So we might talk about five different cafes. Right. Um, and might just show and one you're editorializing picture. editorializing it. Yeah. yeah, versus making it, a, because you know we, we do only have so many posts that we can put out there. So we try to promote as many places as we that can at once, um, which is part of the reason why that, that comes into play. But thank you for that feedback. Yeah. Any other questions for our Siren team? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you so much. It's nice to see you all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> okay, uh, let's move forward here. Uh, mm -hmm. Item number 10. <laughs> Contract for Holiday Lights 2022 English Gardens. Uh, a real brief overview. The uh, Infrastructure Committee has met with uh, English Gardens. Uh, they have reviewed uh, the standard downtown plan area that the DDA has been involved with previously. Uh, English Gardens has provided uh, uh, cost estimate and agreement with uh, moving forward with that plan based on input from the infrastructure committee and the infrastructure committee is uh, recommending the board move forward with uh, those plans and, and they are attached in the uh, packet um, and english gardens is here if you have questions to them in that regard uh, the total cost on that i believe is 144,000, roughly 144 5 um, and that's included the second item uh, that the infrastructure committee has met and discussed with English Gardens is a plan for uh, Centennial Commons Park. Um, English Gardens did present a proposal uh, that included some uh, uh, trunk wrapping and some uh, imp uh, lighting for uh, various trees within the park, uh, as well as the, the purchase and installation of a large uh, walk-through uh, decorative um, ornament, and those are also included in uh, uh, your packet today. The committee uh, didn't come up with a specific recommendation on that. They were uh, wanted to explore uh, uh, options and discuss it a little bit further. Uh, from staff standpoint, I, we're a little concerned, and English Guard's a little concerned about the timing and ordering and getting things for the Centennial Commons for next year. Uh, so I wanted to at least bring it to the full board's attention that uh, one of your options is to, to move forward with that proposal as well. Um, again, it, it's uh, uh, something that, as we discussed with English Gardens, can be added to and modified in, in future years. But uh, given that it's March, um, it may be difficult to uh, uh, get another plan, more quotes, and still have something that's... Uh, uh, ready for next uh, next season. So um, I know English Gardens is here. The proposal cost on that was almost 95000 And again, that's in the packet. So 
uh, they are here and I think they can provide you a little overview of, of both, both items. Okay, I'm sure there's going to be some questions, but did you want to come forward here? Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll just start with the questions, whatever you guys have, we have all the information. Okay. Um, I just want to, uh, I'm going to summarize for the board here. Is just, there any pictures? Because there wasn't any pictures. In there's there. some, if you get into like page 30 oh, on that packet. Well. Ornament. I was page trying, 32. but it was going. Page 29 is ornament. And I have um, dimensions for that too, you guys. So I want to clarify for the board here, we're, we're looking at two different items here, mm -hmm. two different resolutions. One is to maintain what we have been doing in the past. We're in the third year of our kind of our lighting cycle that we normally would go through. Um, so I, I think that the first part of this is just to maintain what we've been doing um and it's there's an addition on here too right mr twing that we're yeah, adding some stuff around troy street troy, troy street, street and park. um stuff that wasn't done before uh due to the park but we're adding some uh more lighting um uh, along there so that's the first proposal and then the second proposal is for some lighting for Centennial Park specifically, which again, the board was looking for options as to what we may or may not want to do with that. Um, we didn't, English Garden provided us with some of their thoughts, um, which is what you see before you in the second part of this. Um, so we, the infrastructure committee is definitely recommending the first half of this. Um, for the downtown area. For the downtown area and the, with the addition of Troy Street. Um, second half, if we want something for this, this year for Centennial Park, this might be our only option. Um, but again, I'll, I guess I'll, we, maybe you can expand upon that a little bit. I think it would be helpful as to the lighting we're talking about for Centennial Park specifically. So for Centennial Park, you can see up there, the ornament is meant to draw you through the park. Because I know the, the concept behind the park was more of uh, nodes with destinations within it. Um, so this is meant to pull you through that. It can become a selfie station if you know a skating rink is done in the park for uh, winter blast that can be moved really throughout we're recommending kind of in the center of the park so it pulls you really through it um, but again it can go pretty much anywhere within that space uh, the other items in there are um, the groups of trees that have the cafe lights around them right now that have the seating the gravel uh, under instead of concrete underneath of them lighting those so it creates a little bit more of a special space to use during the winter months um, the Biggest part of what we proposed in that park is that oak tree. Um, putting on expandable lights that can stay up for two years, what we do in the other large trees throughout the city, um, going 65 to 70 feet up that tree. So you could probably see that from a lot of the city, aside where buildings block it. Uh, to really kind of make that that statement piece within there. Um, and then around the, the monument, doing some of the hemlocks through there, just really kind of soft lighting, um, nothing too bold and in your face, using um, some of the colors that we already have throughout the city as well. Tim, without me having to go through all these papers here and look this up, the, the, the bulk of the money for Centennial Park, the bulk of the 94000 Forty of it. Forty of it was for the. Forty of it was for the. Forty of it the, was for the walkthrough ornament. Okay. And then about twenty-four of it was to light the sixty-footer. Mm -hmm. The twenty-four of it was light six foot. That's exactly what I wanted to know. Yep. Okay. You can read your mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is the back of that. I, I love the idea of the the sixty-footer and the and how we have the placement throughout. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the walk-through ornaments where I'm not totally sold yet, just in terms of brand, um, if we want to be... We give away an ornament every year. 
you know, in, in, in terms of the brand of how that walks through, how they handle snow, or I'm just a little bit sketchy on that. And then with moving the, um, the concept of moving the skating rink into the center of the park, and then now that's kind of like a on the mm -hmm. side situation. Mm -hmm. I would, and I'd, I prefer the park to be a spot for an, uh, the ice rink and then light it around it, mm -hmm. right, as you kind of have, but just without the ornament, personally. People love those ornaments for the selfie station. No, I don't disagree with that. But I do like the idea of an ice rink as well. So, the ice rink, is that actually... We really don't know where we're we don't going. know. We don't that, know where no, that would go. If don't, that even uh, goes. don't assume it's in this. <laughs> don't assume plan. that. No, no, okay. do not. Yes, that's um, the that's the challenge behind that. But to their point, right? We can put that to the side, and it can still be a selfie station by the by. You would you know warm up. So I mean, I'm not. You know, it's just that was the concern that we talked about before a little bit. Yeah, we thought for now, for the center of the park, it would be a nice impact since you know the trees are still small and yep. to wrap them all didn't make a whole lot of sense for this year. As the years progress and things grow, we can definitely add to that. But as Sterling said, the ornament can get moved anywhere within the park. Yep. And the other thing is with the ornament, if the park ends up, the Centennial Commons ends up not being the spot for that, it can go somewhere else in the city that if you have space for it. Mm. Yep. So um, just from my point of view here, um, I have the same point of view that Director Keith has. I, I am. Um, I am in favor of, in terms of Centennial Park, I'm in favor of, of uh, doing the, the, the tree and the lighting of the trees in the, that are currently in the park um, and incurring that expense. But I'm, I'm like Director Keith, I'm on the bubble about the 40000 for the for the one ornament, walkthrough ornament. But um, Director Yesbeck. I uh, I have to agree with Director London. I think that walkthrough ornament is something that people will act, make a trip Act to through. downtown for to walk through. Mm -hmm. Kids would love to walk through that. Agreed. But but uh, is there a room for something like that and the ice skating rink? Because I think even more all winter kids would enjoy the ice skating rink. Mm -hmm. To me, if you had both, that's it's a, a home run. Is there room for uh, Tim? Is there room for both? Um, well, I obviously, as indicated, the, uh, the ornament can get moved to other locations because it's going to be in the walkway. It's going to be on a hard surface uh, part of it so it can move around. Uh, and, and I guess my suggestion would be as I would make a decision based on where the ice rink may or may not go um, mm -hmm. because I've heard just as many comments that the ice rink's not going to go in the park because of maintenance and killing the grass and a hundred other things that, I, that I've, I've heard that. So I, I wouldn't make a decision based on something that we don't know and may not occur. Yep. Um, so I, 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 that's the only caution I would be there. If you think this is a great element, yes, I think the actual placement of it, we can figure out. And if you don't like it, we can shift it over a little bit. But. Uh, um, um, it's, it, it appears to be wide enough at five, a little over five feet uh, for snow removal brush to get through. Um, you know, they'll have to be careful with it so it doesn't get pelted with the snow that it's brushing. <laughs> uh, um, but that's true of a lot of things downtown, so I um, guess that's my comment. Did, do we, did we talk about the lifespan of this? So it carries a two-year warranty. Um, lifespan of it, I mean, it's going to probably last, I would say, five to ten in that range because um, they're light sets and it's a metal structure. You know, we can do a little bit of maintenance on it if it needs to down the line, five, seven years down the line to give it a little bit more longevity as well. We do that with Christmas trees. It's very similar to... Right. I, I was just comparing the amount of money they were spending and to how long it's actually going to last. Yeah, I mean, in second year setup and takedown of that, you're probably going to be around 5000 So I think so. I okay. also spoke to the manufacturer, yeah, and she said that they have um, similar structures in um, Chicago, and they're on year eight, and they still have had no problems. And I would say Chicago is probably even a little bit worse than our winters are. <laughs> um, so that's just a little bit of a testament to the, to the product. And didn't we talk about that? Um, I'll get. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, 
I think we also talked about, because I think the board should hear this, is that there could potentially be other pieces brought in mm -hmm. next year definitely. in addition to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's what I was getting at. Um, is all the landscape complete in the park or is there going to be another phase coming up? There's still some uh, plant materials that have to be added. Uh, <clears throat> perennials, flowers, there's, there's several items, but the only thing they're proposing to put uh, lights on are some of the more, I, I guess, larger, mature, <laughs> mature, <laughs> mature trees, yeah. trees, but uh, the larger ones at this point. And as the committee discussed with them, is as the trees grow and plants grow, they may add more lights at different other locations. Okay. Yeah. Um, Dr. Rossman. I, I guess, um, Chairman Sophia, I, I like the, the giant bulb and, and just so Director Keith understands, I mean, during Small Business Saturday, or, that was one of our giveaways for years, is this, this Royal Oak bulb. Um, but I, I like it, but I, I only really like it if we are going to be more visionary and think about adding other elements mm -hmm. into the park. Like, I do see this as a great, you know, walkway from the parking garage to the farmer's market on Saturday, you know, Saturdays in the winter when people are going into the farmer's market. You know, it's, it's just, it is a nice, fun element, but I... If it's the only thing we do, it'll kind of be, it, to me, it's, it's a little weird then. Well, just it, as represented on the drawing, the, the library is over here. These are the, this is the steps of the library. Mm -hmm. This is the walkway across to the farmer's market, and Troy runs this direction. The bulb is actually depicted more into the center. Mm -hmm. It's not on the walkway between Oh, I know. I knew. I knew where it was, but okay. I'm just saying, right. if it didn't work there, you could move it yeah, into the move it. Right. walkway yeah. of the. And there yeah, are definitely tons, tons of different shapes, sizes. It's very customizable as well, so mm -hmm. you can always, you know, add different structures to it through the years if you wanted to kind of make that a little bit of a theme going through the park or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, that that's always an option as well. So I'll make a motion to approve the streetscapes. Uh, holiday lighting that we've done in the past, um, and I'll. Uh, yeah, there's two separate ones. I'll there. make that first motion. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll get that out of the way. I, I. I'll second that. Okay, I got a motion by Director Rosbeck and a second by Director Keith. Director Yazbek. The, the I just have a question about this garland, mm -hmm. the lamppost garland, a hundred and eight thousand. Or 116,000 altogether. Mm -hmm. Is that am I reading that correctly? Yes. It, it just seems like. But here's all the. It seems like we can do some like another ornament, walk through ornament or something. I don't know. I, I would just say I that we can. I think we have to spend... replace the garland this year. Pardon? Yeah. I think we're we replacing it this the year because the previous one had is is getting ragged. Yes. Which is why the high cost. Is that we're replacing yes. the we're entire replaced. city? Yeah, throughout the whole city. Yeah, that's that's, that's just a cycle. That's a cycle thing, I yeah. think. From, and, and the from thing what I, I would recall. I would caution with uh, taking. I, don't know. I, I think a couple more ornaments would be more impactful than garland if. Oh. For priorities. So, so. <laughs> so if I may, like yeah, it, go ahead. The part I would caution with that is we've had complaints from other from businesses that didn't get the coverage. Yes. And that's why we went to the garland because we can spread that out throughout the majority of the city. You know, before we just did corner trees, and you know, people are like, "Well, I don't have a tree lit in front of my business. Uh, why not?" No, so we from, we're figuring out another way, which is the garland, which spreads that coverage. From out. the resident perspective, it is a highlight to see Royal Oak garland garland up. It's warm and cozy, and it's also a daytime interest versus mm -hmm. just the nighttime of the lights. Mm -hmm. It's hard to really see the lights during the day, even though they are on. Um, but it gives a lot of daytime holiday presents and as well. And if we want to be Christmas City USA, <laughs> yeah, I but think to your, this okay. is a good but to your point, I, I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> but to your point, I get it. Like it would be nice to create that feel in, in Centennial Commons of just like this is the destination I in think the downtown. We have a visionary opportunity with adding more. Which I think that's that's, that's the direction we should probably move. Mm -hmm. Is like, like um, in Beacon Park in Detroit, they mm -hmm. have a giant holiday swing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. 
and they do have similar structures in downtown Detroit as well. Um, and there are like selfie stations, like yeah. you had mentioned. It draws people in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to, uh, on the first resolution, I'm going to call for the vote at this time. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. Director Rosvick, did you have something else or? No. Okay. So that leaves us with um, the uh, English or uh, the Centennial Commons issue. Um, whether we want to move forward with that or any portion of that. Am I saying that right? Oh, correct. Yes. I mean, if you wanted to do everything but the, the bulb, you could make a motion to include everything but that. Um, certainly. Or you, you don't have to take any action. I mean, what's well, on the timeline, right? I mean, I just want everybody to be able to swallow the, you know, the the concept of the ornament and the in the. I mean, is if we made the call at say the next meeting on on say just the addendum, I'm going to call that. Are we too late? For, for, for the, this calendar year, for this, for, for this the, winter? For, for the bulb, no. For the other portions of it, yes. Okay. Director Yazwick. I make a motion on approve it. I make a motion to approve all of it except the bulb since we can think about that uh, for 30 days and, and take further action next month. Okay. Um, I, I have a motion by Director Yazwick. I'll second. Second by Director Rosbeck. <laughs> Did we did we discuss other potential items styles? Yes. Or item? We did not, but we can get you guys some stuff if you want. Okay. Can That'd you get that idea. to us in advance of the meeting yeah, of so that we can distribute it among the board mm -hmm. so that they'll have something else to look at yeah. and to discuss? Mm -hmm. Um, I will say the walkthrough ones are a little bit more limited in shapes and such, mm -hmm. but there's right. also shapes that can be put like in the middle of a lawn space somewhere mm -hmm. in the park mm -hmm. that yeah, also are great. similar in structure and size, but maybe different form. Okay. Like anything to, that's yeah. a, anything that'll create a photo opportunity, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm all for. It just I just I think the idea of just looking at a couple different options yeah. is yeah. is better than just saying right. let's go with the first one we've yeah. seen. But no I mean it could be a present. Right. Okay. Right. We'll get there. I think it so will we'll, uh, think about it better. Yeah. Is everybody okay with doing that at this point? Right. And then we'll we'll look at the uh, extra point next next month. Okay. So I have a motion on the table. I'll call for that vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. Thank you. Okay. We clear? Yep. We'll get you guys that information. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number 11, uh, contract for landscaping maintenance, uh, Centennial Common. Uh, the infrastructure committee has uh, discussed uh, maintenance services for Centennial Commons. Um, the committee is recommending that uh, Centennial Commons be added to the worry-free contact as an addendum. Uh, they have, worry-free currently has a contract with the DDA that runs through the end of of 2022 roughly November uh, that contract ends up so the board will have to reconsider the entire contract sometime between now and then uh, but at this point in order to address maintenance of the Centennial Commons Park in the spring and over the summer um, there was discussion of adding that that is an addendum to worry freeze contract um, obviously the city's DPS uh, personnel are very happy if uh, if that were to occur. Um, the one thing I would point out and uh, uh, um, is that the city does have a sponsorship agreement with Henry Ford Health Systems for fifty thousand dollars on an annual basis that can be used exclusively for maintenance of the park. Uh, the committee is recommending that at least a portion of those funds are used to cover the the cost of uh, a worry freeze added uh, a dollar amount. <coughs> um, and so the, the uh, DDA would probably need some sort of separate agreement with uh, the city uh, to have those funds either passed through or, or given. So that's one of the one caveat on the uh, 
uh, to do that, but it was kind of like, do you get that agreement first or do you bring it to the DDA board to see if you even want to do it? So it's here in front of you first uh, to potentially add it as an addendum. Um, and it would be subject to obviously uh, uh, the city providing those funds either through an agreement or a, a direct pass through. Um, you'll see the dollar amount that is included is, is estimated to be uh, run down to it. Um, it's scope of works about 17,000 for. Um, Little, almost 18,000, excuse me, for uh, uh, maintenance activities uh, in the park, fertilizing, lawn mowing, uh, things like that. In addition, uh, there's a one-time uh, uh, fee that would uh, cover the uh, maintenance around, uh, not one-time, there's a one-time fee for purchase of the hanging baskets. Um, that would occur in 2022. After that, all there would be would be the purchase of the actual flowers and the water and, and, and maintenance of those. So there's a, another 11,000 there that's uh, most of which is a one-time cost. Uh, it drops down to about 5,600 after that. Um, so those are the two items that would be added to, as an addendum uh, for this spring and summer. Okay, uh, I see a couple of hands here. Um, Director Rosswick first. I'm making a motion to approve. Motion to approve on the table. Yes. Is that subject to the assignment of yes. the $50,000 mm -hmm. uh, sponsorship fee to the DDA? Yes. It should be. If that's okay with the that director. That's what, that's what okay. it says. So okay. I approve the resolution. Are you I'm making a motion that? to approve. I'll second that. Motion by Director Rosbeck and second by Director Yesbeck. Any, uh, Director Keith. I just had a comment. Is, is that that also does include daily cleaning of the restrooms, which I think is a very, very important thing to make sure that mm -hmm. that's well taken care of in a, in a highlight. So it, this includes that. So I think that I'm just trying to Yes. Speak to the value of that contract. That's what we were told. It said, I mean, if contractor shall include okay. right there in the 17, the page with the, the 17 parks, rooms, yeah. yeah. Daily through yeah. November 27th. So I'm so, guessing yeah. that is through, through this contract, or are they not going to do, is, are we winterizing those restrooms? I guess is my question. Good question. Winterizing the restrooms? Well, this contract is only through the summer. Okay. okay. I guess I'm just, now that's just a side question for me. Of, of, are be, we winterizing those or will there they active all winter long? I think that is something we can bring up uh, and whether DPS does it, because they'll have to shut it off and deal with it. Uh, they're simply going to clean it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm all for cleaning in the restaurant. That's what, I guess I was. I was trying to make that a positive. That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll get that answered for sure. But I do. I am curious now that I think about it. Should that be a line um, item on here? Uh, um, the, to specify the cleaning of the restrooms? I, because... It's in the beginning. It's is in, it, it is on there. On page it's three. Page three at the top of the page three. Yeah. That's restrooms uh, daily. Okay. Um, Gotcha. Uh, Chairman Safai, can yes. I make a resolution? Um, and maybe this, may, or an addendum to my resolution. Can we um, approve the resolution as written until it says, uh, subject to the city providing the necessary HFHS funds? Could we, could we modify that to say, um, subject to the city providing the DDA the fifty thousand dollar Henry Ford funds, moving the funds what into may our cost fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Well, no, but move them into our line item. I think I think we were supportive of the park to the tune of like five million dollars. So maybe we should just have, we can suggest we get the assignment of funds. I think we t the board talked about that before when we were. Um, 
getting the maintenance, the maintenance yeah. sponsorship assigned back to the DDA for management. Well, my only thought was that you're going to see a separate agreement with the city that's going to come to you for approval. That's what this is subject to. You're, you're agreeing to do add worry for add worry free to do the maintenance subject to an agreement that you're going to see further oh, so we'll we'll have that another oh we'll we'll address that, that yeah. says you get the money okay or whether it's a pass through will be part of that separate then i'm not a dent then, I'm, then i'll keep my original resolution okay yeah i wasn't trying to write that agreement <laughs> in this resolution right <laughs> okay um, yeah, from just from the infrastructure, I mean, this just made sense. Um, the additional, even the additional hanging baskets uh, that we were trying to maintain what we have throughout the city and bring it over into Centennial Commons. So that, that was the thought process there. Cleaning the restrooms was, was a, a big deal there. And we just felt that um, it would be in good hands with worry free and DPW wouldn't have to worry about this this portion. Um, we can always call um, them if necessary, but we can also call worry free if there's an issue. Uh, and I'm sure they're already here in town. So so it just it kind of makes sense and we thought the contract was reasonable. Okay, so seeing nothing else, I will call for this vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that passes. Okay, uh, DDA budgets, item 12. Tim, this is you. Uh, well, the first one is the operating fund budget. Uh, this, as you, some board members may recall this, these funds are generated out of the uh, DDA's uh, tax levy uh, in the downtown on downtown properties. Uh, roughly about 1.6 mills uh, hasn't been set for next year, but that's uh, based on the last uh, dollar amount. Uh, so you'll see uh, the budget has uh, three columns. One is a basic description of the line item uh, in the first column, and then it's got the uh, second column is the 2021-2022 amended budget. That's the current fiscal year that we're in. And then the final column is a 2022-23, uh, which would be the proposed. Uh, the property tax revenue line item is pretty consistent. Uh, it doesn't change because of base evaluations in the downtown. Uh, the interest rate uh, that should actually read $100 versus $1,000, uh, so I will correct that. Um, and then the use of the fund balance uh, is simply to, to balance it out. I believe this fund has over about 130000 in a fund balance currently. Um, so you'll see the total revenues use is projected at about 65200 and then that's split between operational items for the DDA. It's uh, uh, some salary of staff uh, and, and benefits. Uh, those are final determination on those two line items are set by the city's finance office when they finish the, their budget analysis and I, everybody gets dealt with it from uh, changes in the benefits and wages. So those you may see change between now and uh, uh, June 30th. The rest of it is, like I said, operational items uh, for the DDA office supplies. Uh, you do uh, replace trees and shrubs in the downtown. Uh, it's not too often that we have to do that. Um, I won't go through it in great detail there. It's pretty standard across the board, uh, unless you got questions. Uh, there is a resolution uh, in the cover memo if you're inclined to approve. Chairman Zavaya, I uh, move to approve the resolution. I'll Motion second. by Director Rossway. I'll second second it. Second by Director Keith. Any comments or questions regarding this one? Okay, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. And opposed? 
And the motion passes. Uh, the next item, item B, is to sit, uh, DDA's development fund. Uh, this is obviously your larger um, fund and covers most of your projects. Uh, there are several blanks in here in the sense I'll be looking for the board's direction on certain items. Um, and then there are some placeholders uh, that we've, uh, uh, Daniel and I have stuck in just to uh, uh, hold a, a budget line item so that the committees can dive into the detail in particular things in regards to a marketing plan and some other things like that. But um, just to kind of walk through it, uh, uh, the property tax revenue is related to your tax increment revenue. Um, I got uh, additional information from the finance department today that that should that five million could actually uh, bump up to six million um, for next year. The interest uh, more likely would be about five thousand, um, given where we're at in the current fiscal year and the interest that's been generated. Uh, the other revenue items are. Consistent, so I'll probably adjust the five million to six and the interest down to five thousand. Uh, under expenses, again, I'm still waiting on the uh, final figures from the finance department on wages and benefits. That's why you see the um, yellow um, highlighted area in your packet. Um, once those are given to me by finance, I'll insert those and make those adjustments. And again, I don't, I don't have anything to say over those. Those are based on uh, hours and the, the wages. Um, then the next items are more in line with what the board's uh, going to have input on. Again, there's some miscellaneous operating supplies. The contractor worker services, um, is simply if we need outside legal counsel primarily uh, uh, under uh, the next item down. Um, I bumped that up to 30,000 because you'll recall about a month ago we decided to do an RFP for um, or solicit bids for outside service on some contract items. So I bumped that from 10 to 30. Uh, audit services uh, is a number that again I'll get from finance when they finally uh, have that, as well as the uh, property casual insurance services. That's a number that covers the board in terms of liability and insurance, and that's what it'll be charged off. I've just carried forward last year's because I didn't have a final figure at this point. Um, the worry-free contract, um, you best bless uh, today, uh, so you'll the 425 will uh, uh, be in there and with the addendum and their, uh, and their ongoing normal activities. The holiday lights for English Gardens, I did not insert a number. Uh, based on your actions today, I'll insert uh, the total of those two contracts uh, in that figure. Um, the only other items in there right now are stamp concrete, annual maintenance at ceiling, um, 62,000. You may recall two years ago we replaced all the brick or concrete pavers in the downtown with stamped uh, colored concrete. Those need to be sealed. Um, and so there'll be another go around to seal those uh, this year. When we bid the entire thing last year, you may recall that it exceeded uh, the engineer's <laughs> estimate, so we did not do it last year. Uh, and I've allocated about 150000 for the L-shaped alley uh, that uh, Mr. Holbrook brought up uh, uh, during public comment. One thing I will say about that is the Infrastructure Committee has met with the property owners in around that area on two occasions. And the committee has asked those property owners to come up with a consensus plan uh, to move forward. Uh, they have not done that to this date. We keep hearing different things, and I, I don't want to spend a conversation on that tonight, but 
Um, we did move forward with getting the survey done, uh, but as of today, um, we have not received agreement on uh, what those uh, adjacent businesses and property owners would like to see done there. And so we haven't moved forward with it. Um, the largest item in here was uh, a place making improvements for kind of the Fifth Street Plaza and other areas in the downtown. And this is a purely a budget holder of uh, one and a quarter million uh, for the infrastructure committee to work on and uh, come forward with. Um, electricity, uh, you may recall that you cover the electrical fees in the downtown area. Uh, facade grant and mural program um, are, are again placeholders. That depends on who applies and the program. And then under the Main Street uh, Promotions Committee uh, line item, you have several contracts. I've inserted those dollar amounts. Spooktacular at 10,000. The Jingle and Parade event at 70,000. That's with 360 production, both of those. Um, Small Business Saturday was at 15,000. That really, nothing occurred with that this last year um, we, because of not having a downtown manager and we have, other reasons. There seems to be two. What's the other Small Business Saturday? Pardon me? There's another small business Saturday line item at the bottom, toward the bottom, under under um, social. It was the YFT. It was part of the YFT program. That's a, yeah, that's a downtown. Is that downtown. all YFT? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That's the run of downtown thing when we get down there. Got it. Um, Arts, Beats, and Eats is a contract again uh, with an allocation of hundred thousand. Uh, St. Patty's Day Parade, you normally fund. There's no, there's no contract there, but every year that I've been here, you've contributed that dollar amount. Um, Rock and Rides is a contract amount. Uh, Royal Pride um, was before you and asked for the seventy-five thousand. And then there are a couple of uh, placeholders, and one is a dollar. So the Hundred thousand under other special events and sponsorships was a placeholder, um, depending on where you wanted to allocate those funds and what request comes in. Winter blast, obviously, you have an agreement now at sixty thousand was. And you'll be putting the new agreement in the tequila and tacos, or tacos and tequila. Type. Yep. But right now it'll come out of the hundred thousand. Got it. Is there, right, so, so we had the, the tacos, right, which is 45, I think, is what it came out to be or something along those lines. Right. Um, you know, one of the, the two of the ones that I really want to make sure that we, that we include in that is, is, the, is the events on how we can help the chamber in terms of the Royal Oak Bloom, Art of Fire, and then the, the, commu the Commission of the Arts, right? So yeah. those three of making sure that those are still mainstays, right? I'm just saying if we take 100, we take 45 out of that, that leaves us with 55, right? So I don't want to lose out on some of those, so I'd rather increase that by the, the taco event I rather agree. than trying to take away from some of the chamber events. Um, you know, I mean, the concert series is something that is, that's that been improving over mm -hmm. the last two years mm -hmm. um, that I've been, you know, really focused in that, and I think that that, um, I'd just like to make sure that we keep those as our forefront. If I may comment on a couple of those items. Uh, so the, specifically the Commission for the Arts sponsorship, what the DDA has done in the past is just broad brush a $50,000 payment to them and they've used that for their programs. In well actually, wait, wait, the, the, the DDA has not just given them $50,000. What they need to do is submit a proposal. Yep. They, and then they haven't done that. They didn't do it. They didn't run any events last year. We haven't just written them a check for fifty thousand dollars ever. Yep. They've had to come forward with a proposal of what they're going to use it for, whether that's concerts in a park or right. some other thing. And they haven't done that last year, and they haven't done it this year either. So um, we did, though, however, resolve to give the chamber fifty thousand dollars, and then they came up with um, their programming. So. I agree with Director Keith is in the fact that I do not 
our hundred thousand dollar slush fund, as you may call it, is is not going to cover tequila and tacos along with the these other two events that we possibly have covered in the past. I right. guess. And, and, and that's what I'm looking for from you today is what do you want to plug in for Another Commission for the thousand. Arts? What do you want to plug in for Royal Oak and Bloom or, or an art and fire? What do you want to put in time. those dollar amounts? Oh, right. I would hold the same for Royal Oak and Bloom and Art of Fire. Um, and I would look at, I, I think the 50 would be sufficient for the Commission of the Arts. I don't know that. I'd like to see that proposal from them. Um, that's what he tends, so, that's what Jason tends to come But up. I think that, so he is working on trying to set it up so that it is in future success, non-Jason. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are trying to build it so that it's more stable without having everything be running through him. So okay. I don't know that new price. Um, Do I put I, 75 in there? So I would be happy with doing that. I, I don't misspoke know. previously on the 50000 So they're putting together their, their plan this year as it relates to the concert series. At their very last meeting in February, they just handed that off to the chamber. And so that's why that budget wouldn't necessarily represent 50 grand for them to put on the concert series when the chamber is taking that on from them. So right. that was part of the discussion as far as those numbers are in flux because the chamber is picking up that large event and the Commission for the Arts is still putting together their sort of packet of things that they want to do this year. Yeah. Um, and at their last meeting, they were still very much in the brainstorming phase as far as putting together their budget. I think though the commissioner uh, to Director Keith, I, I would say putting 75000 in for the Commission of the Arts, wherever it comes from, because it could come from the Chamber at that point, potentially. Um, I think the chamber, would, the chamber would probably look to us to support it. I, I, this is a placeholder, we said. I, I would just say for other special events or even new events, you know, 300. Well, if you want it for, if you want some funds for the Commission for the Arts, you don't know what they're going to do, but if you want to put, I would put a placeholder amount. If you want to re have, have the 50000 in there, I'll put 50000 in there. What I'm saying is we're not just going to write them a check. I'm, right. Yeah, I get, gonna, I'm all for that. I don't yeah, want to just cut them a check. They don't just get a check. They have to come with 100%. what it's for. 100% I 100, 100 um, with that. I would say 75 then for just to give us some caution, just to give us some ability to handle any curveballs there and then um, on the the bloom and art of fire I would stick to the 20 okay. and then we'll leave the hundred thousand at the top and I'll add taco fest that sounds great. yeah that would be great all right I, I would I would make it larger because Metro times blow out hopefully they're coming back um, as for other seven. events can we just since we don't well know. you can you can add more to it if you would like or you can wait until they actually ask you have a decent fund balance that this is just a budget for this is to hold for so if, whenever something comes it doesn't matter what this is we can well i would add. i would rather the cmc committee actually come up with a plan of who you want to fund and how but yeah rather, that sounds great for rather me. than knee jerking this every month like we've been yep. i mean we would agree. It, it's not very conducive to constantly doing things at the last minute but if 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 the blowout's going to come back then great they should get back next month yeah not not a not month two weeks before, before the yeah event. Sure. so we don't want to it's not just a placeholder we want to be as specific as possible yeah saying. but i think you can also have a line item in there that yeah. has some spillover some spillover yeah. i mean you, you, you do have new events I, I, put can we put a, a, a number there? Let's go for 100 in the new events. Yeah, yeah. let's put 100 in the new events. And then Sorry. do the 75 and the, the 20. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Um, if we're done, we'll move on with that. Again, I've put some placeholders in for public relations. I know Daniel's working with Siren um, as far as 90,000. I put in some placeholders regarding social media content at 100,000, and some media buys at uh, at 150,000, with some potential theater ads at 10,000. Those are all based on our prior discussions of mm -hmm. where the plan may end up once it comes through the 
the committee, but those are all strictly placeholders uh, to be worked out as far so, as contracts and things going forward. Under the Business Development Committee, um, the Social District, um, we really haven't spent any money on the Social District this year. Um, and I don't anticipate really spending a lot, and they'll see the 200000 in there. So I really dropped that down to 10000 uh, What the social district is, is covering cups and signage and other things, so I don't really anticipate that being a, a huge amount. Then under the Do downtown you, can dollars I ask community. A question around that though. Do you expect though, with the summer being more normal than it has been in two years, whether that, that that will perk up? I have a bunch of cups over Still. in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, right. I hope it perks up. <laughs> Sounds um, good. Anyways, the downtown dollar, um, really we just put in some uh, potential gift card things for Arts, Beats and Eats. Uh, our town, which was Consumers Energy has come to the DDA the last couple of years and various other contests. So I just plugged in a placeholder at 155000 uh, for whatever uh, dollar program the committee and Daniel want to come up with. Um, Small Business Saturday was again uh, something we hadn't done in the past as far as gift cards, but may want to. Uh, and then Daniel suggested some things about the workforce development program, and so we plugged in 25000 for that. So uh, all those combined are, are YIFTI dollars? Is that what we're saying? Yeah, they're YIFTI. Yes. Because I, I wouldn't, I would like to be it, like it to be as, at least as great as it was last year, 300. I think we're a little under that with these subtotals. But we haven't spent 300. We haven't even come close to spending three hundred. So that we still have a, a balance. We've got a balance. We're going to have a balance. This is that's the point of what, these. What's the balance? The, I don't know yet because they haven't come all back. Have you seen them all come back? In if redemption rates, if we nobody else redeemed their card for the next fifteen days, we'd get about eighty-five thousand dollars back in the account. And so this is this is suggesting another what two two uh, another two hundred sixty-five. Uh, almost two hundred seventy-five thousand. in Okay, time. so we'll be over three hundred. Yeah. Then, okay, that sounds good, because this this program is going to pay off. I think if we eventually. and we may find other events or situations where the downtown dollars might come into right. play. So, I, I having do, that availability, I think. Are is, you seeing just purchasing of the gift cards themselves just happening? Mm -hmm. We do still get some purchases, yeah. um, not quite the rate that we do. Uh, right now I'm working with Siren on some potential inter or, um, Instagram contests that would beef that up a little bit, and yeah. have been working more the, the landing page on how to buy those into the website. I was going to say, website. it's harder to find that than it is, but I, I do know as a resident, I know a lot of people want to buy them just to have them. Um, they find it the easiest way to get around town and use the card everywhere. For the folks watching at home right now, I just added a button to the downtown webpage, awesome. romi.gov forward slash downtown, and that's right there on the front to purchase them. Thank you. So you want to add to the 155? Well, you, it's, it looks like you have it, you have 155 in Abe and those contests, but you also have 105 in Small Business Saturday, or is right. that something different? And then you have 25 for workforce development, so it's that's now uh, workforce. Well, 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 workforce is not the, the yip, uh, uh, remaining oh, balance, a, correct? Sorry. Right, so that should be that should be good. Okay, we could add more if we need to, right. but yeah, okay. I just want to make sure I wasn't adding yeah. anything. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and then the last few items are um, uh, obligations on behalf of the DD, uh, not obligations at all, but you got training and education, dues and membership. Legal notices, things that we have to do, as um, far as your uh, uh, audit and, and annual reports, we have to publish. Uh, the transfer to the general fund is an agreement with the city uh, to cover the debt service on the 
Centennial Park as well as the streetscapes around uh, the Centennial Park area. That's the annual debt service payment um, pursuant to that agreement. Um, public safety, you've allocated uh, 540000 for several years to cover additional police services in the downtown. There is no agreement to do so there, uh, but you have done so. Um, the transfer to the auto parking is the debt service on the Center Street deck, the new deck, uh, and that's based on the agreement you have with the city and the revenue bonds that were sold for that deck. Do we know how long that debt service is? Uh, yes, I do, but I can't tell you for sure how many more years it has. Okay. Um, it was opened in 2018, and I don't recall whether it was a 20-year or 25-year, but okay. I can give you that if you want to know. Um, and then the miscellaneous expenditures, uh, the 440000 is uh, an estimate of what you owe in reimbursement for the Hyatt Place uh, reimbursement agreement with, you have with a the developer there. Um, you may recall that you agreed to fund up to $3 million in um, public improvements that were around and part of that development for 10 years. And you're probably halfway through. Okay. What is that and for? You, the Hyatt Place development. Oh, the Hyatt Place. That's my estimate based on what we ended up paying this year. Do, do we have and it's And it's a reimbursement, so they, they pay the, their taxes, you capture it, based on an 80-20% uh, split, you're giving them 80% of that back. Do we know how much tax capture we've delayed that we're, that we're sitting on? Or, or I know we have some projects that we're not capturing the taxes right away. We're, we're waiting a few years. No, we're capturing. We, this or is, is a that, reimbursement. Or we reimburse them. Okay. We, but we I thought we, we ever, had. We don't ever abate any taxes or delay them. There was one other yeah, one. Yeah, there's there one was, that we abated. I don't know that it that. went. Anyway, yeah, I don't know if that did the one development. You, oops, excuse me. You you did the one down at uh, Main Street. Six and that's one of the, yeah. That, that's moving Williams. forward, right? So that'll be an eighty Far twenty. No, but that's not an abatement. Yeah. That's eighty twenty. Oh, it's eighty. Similar. Okay. It's, an 80, it's a similar situation, right? We we get the we get the and pay back out. We 20. get it, and then we no, we actually pay back eighty. Oh, 80. We keep the twenty until that until it flips. Right. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I didn't know how many of those agreements we had. Uh, two. I think that's the only. Those are the only two current. You've had others in the past, but as soon as they hit the ten year or three million dollars, and this may hit three million before it gets ten okay. years, they'll end. Good to know. Um, what, what, what was the uh, transfer to? Royal Oak City Commission cap project that's zero this year, but it was two million last year. What was that? That's the uh, Royal Oak Civic Center project. You you allocated two point one million to the park and the improvements in the park. The park. Oh. Yeah, we paid that. So we should get the fifty thousand. A million and a half of it was the uh, the uh, library plaza steps and uh, things yeah, that get put the up. The terrace. Now. Well, you can add the 737000 to that as well. Will the terrace have lights? I didn't, I was going to ask that question. What's that? Will the terrace have lights? Um, they're putting the canopies up right now. They're kind of the green things. I'd have to go look at the plans. Okay. I just, I, I think sorry. they do, but I don't want to say for sure. Uh, well, with that, that's what I have. Uh, you can either approve it as we discussed amendments. Obviously, you can't approve it the way it was presented, or you can delay it for another month. But I'll make the motion the to final. approve it with the amendments. I motion by Director Roswick, second by Director London. Anything else with the budget? If not, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. Um, uh, the last budget-related document, uh, that this document generally gets put in the city's 
budget is the DDA's page, uh, which kind of gives a description of what the Downtown Development Authority does, and then it has a list of your goals and objectives. Um, I did ask uh, Daniel to look through it and add his suggestions to it, and those have been added in green. Um, and I believe he had conversations with Siren about some of those. So, yeah, unless you have objections to anything or want to add something, I would just look for a motion to approve. Can I can I ask a question um, with regards to these, um, which I, I I like the additions. Um, my quick question is around that retail. Do we even want to put that retail piece that we have, that little build out that we have? Do we want that as any of our goals or objectives that that gets utilized or placemate? The I'm sorry. The building, the build out in Center the Street, structure. yeah, the parking structure. That's being handled through the city right now. Uh, Mr. Fenton is kind of in charge of that. Um, not sure which direction it's going in. I knew know that he has talked to a number of interested parties. Okay. But I can't give you really any update as to. I just wanted to see if that fell into mm -hmm. this. Um, I'm good. I'll make a motion to approve these. I I appreciate the new, the revised goals. Motion by Director Rosswick. I'll second. Them. Second by Director Keith. Director Yazvik. Yeah, if maybe we can get back to, because one of these items is uh, develop communication work plan strategy to manage and coordinate marketing sure. and outreach. Maybe we can talk about that special uh, committee. To, to kind of uh, sit down with Daniel and evaluate and, and kind of uh, aggregate all these things that we're doing. I would propose that two people from each committee, uh, consumer marketing and, and business, Market. I think uh, Director yeah. Rosbeck for sure from the consumer marketing committee. Um, I would do it unless, uh, Director London, you wanna? That's a hard no? Okay, <laughs> then I would do it. Um, and then from the business marketing committee, I know I think Director Riley would like to do it, and then uh, either you or Director Keith. From from the business, he's not marketing. on business marketing. Are you not? No, he's on I mean, consumer. Uh, he's oh, on consumer okay. marketing. Would you like to? Uh, but like that, to but his, you know what? His, we might go that good. direction. Let yeah. let's let me have this discussion. Okay. Um, away from the meeting, and then we'll set that. Okay. Okay. And then, and then uh, that's great. And then um, for the go ahead place making, uh, I, I noticed in the in the budget there was a, a placeholder for place making in fifth area around fifth. And who's who's where is that going? Who who's looking at that? What? Tim, are you familiar with that? Yeah, I, I know um, it's in the budget. Can I suggest we deal with the goals and objectives okay. and then have site, the outside conversations? Sure. Okay. I mean, okay. Um, is everybody satisfied with this document the way that it is? It's just an attachment onto our budget every year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Very good. Then uh, we have a, a motion and a second. Um, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. And in terms of the place making, I think the intent, because it's an infrastructure thing, would take it to the infrastructure committee. For sure. And the fifth, the fifth Ave remark in there is referring to the already closed down portion that runs past stagecrafters. That's why the term fifth Ave is called out in that. But that would ultimately be something at the decision of the committee. Okay. Um. Sounds good. And it does say other, so it's it's wherever you decide to go. But to, your, I think your question was which committee was going to deal with it. To me, yeah, who's for sure. dealing with that area, that closed down area? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, onward. Onward. Uh, item number thirteen: street patios and sidewalk cafes. 
Uh, I'll let Daniel walk through this. He put it together and has been working on it, so I think he can give you an overview. And I'll have a couple comments when he's done. Uh, as everybody knows, there's patios. Uh, those have been around for a couple of years now because of COVID. A lot of that came down to when the governor at the time extended capacities, uh, usually to 25 to 50 percent for indoor, and this allowed businesses to capture more capacity outside outside of their brick and mortar sort of stores and get more sales during that time. As we all know now, we're at 100 percent capacity indoors. Um, at a lot of my conversations with business owners in downtown, I uh, used a lot of that feedback into some of these design requirements. So part of that being no enclosures like tents, um, a lot of that being higher grade quality materials that are going to be used for patios specifically rather than um, random construction materials that have anecdotally been used to put together some barriers. Uh, and then if you, as you browse further into it, a lot of this is based on our sidewalk cafe regulations that we already have in the city and the process that we already follow and just in a sense adding to that and making it a more um, inclusive to include metered parking spot patios. I would encourage everybody to look at page three at the top of the page it says outdoor dining overview. Um, just so in the discussion we were, we're talking about two different types of patios here, two different classifications, one being sidewalk cafes and one being street patios. Sidewalk cafes, which you've seen in Royal Oak for years and years and years, which are adjoining to the property um, and have its own guidelines as to how far they can come out based on uh, pedestrian walking distances and signage and everything else that's on the street. Those are the ones that typically have gone from April 15th through October 31st. Um, the other ones are the street patios, which we've seen in the last year or so, two years, whatever, um, which are out into um, the parking spots. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're having this discussion, about this, we, we need kind of, just so you know what we're talking about here, one may be different than the other. Uh, I think the goal of the infrastructure committee here was to somewhat leave the, the, the street patio, or the sidewalk cafes adjoining to what we've done over the past, I don't know how many years, um, and leave that as it is. Um, those were fine. We put them back on to the regular calendar year. I did ask Mr. Tween if we could extend that to or recommend to the commission, because this is going to go before the commission, um, that they begin on April 1st and end on October 31st. Um, the street patios, uh, there's a whole bunch of things that are going to have to go along with that. Uh, people are going to have to deal with parking revenue loss, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to be substantial for some people. So that, that, um, <clears throat> that's going to have to be dealt with. Um, I'll let Mr. Twain have, bring his comments to the table. Can Please. I ask a, just a question? Yes. Would we ever, or does the, because we did this, the street um, patios, would we ever let a, uh, a restaurant or, or what have you have both like we do today? Would we want, would we allow that? Well, process wise, where I think the infrastructure committee went and what we've been talking about is you can apply for one or either. You can apply for both. So if you have both, you can apply for both. The process for from the city's end of how we would process them through a review and an approval or a denial would be the same. Okay. So you would apply, and if you wanted to apply for a sidewalk cafe, you could do that. And if you wanted to apply for a street patio, you could do that. They would be separate. And the reason we would do them separate is we may reject one and approve another rather than okay. putting them as to one thing. Um, the design criteria is a little different too because um, the street patios really had no design requirement, no they were not required to submit much of anything other than 
signing an agreement, providing insurance that if something happened, it's your fault, not the city's. <laughs> um, things like that. So um, what this would get back to is requiring all of those street patios to submit the same type of plans that the sidewalk cafes did, which were basically sealed drawings from an architect or an engineer to show how they comply with mm -hmm. various codes and ordinances, how they don't block the gutter and street pan, how they might be compliant with accessibility and ADA rules. The fees would be the exact same as a sidewalk cafe or a patio. If you did both, you'd pay both. They're different reviews. Um, but as uh, Chairman Safaya said, at this point it's very likely, and every indication I have is that the street patios are also going to have to pay for the MPS meters on a daily basis mm -hmm. per space. I've heard that number is $25 per day per space. And that's where, that's where uh, Daniel put a, an estimate of the 213 days of potential use from April 1st to uh, from, from October 31st. Space. That's going to cost you $5,325 oh, per space. space per day, I mean per oh, year, per season. Goodness. So if you've got two spaces, double it. You say, oh my goodness, but that's free rent to them. <clears throat> No, I, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. I'm. I'm just well, thinking about what I see, what I know exists today, and I'm thinking about all the money what I put up with in my street. Right. A, a tent that took up five parking spots, empty from October first until they finally just took it down to last week. Thank God that tent's gone. No, I, I'm. I'm not uh, disagreeing with you. Tents in the streets are like Director London. I was. I just think uh, uh, Director London. Just so you know, I think that was part of what initiated this whole thing. Is yes. We did get feedback on um, tents, tents, tents and bubbles, sure. and uh, some of the some of the outdoor ones that were out into the street. So I think this was a step in trying to, at the very least, regulate right. those. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. um, this way, it gives the city a little bit better control over to what we are going to see there. Yeah, I, like what I like what they're charging them because giving up that street parking is huge for a retailer. In my yeah. street, there's two spots. So, how do you, okay, I guess I'm, I'm going to maybe be the devil's advocate there, though, but let's say A.L. Mary's for, for whatever reason not only has a patio on the sidewalk but wants to, to take up the the spaces in front of their place. I mean, they have a different parking situation on Main Street than the people in the back on Washington do for, yes. from that perspective. And you could fit a tent or you could fit whatever into one space because they're horizontal, they're vertical or they're par parallel to the curb and not perpendicular to the curb. Right. So, uh, it's mean, just it is you lose is what you, you end do. up getting when you on Washington it would be a, a park it'd be you'd have to get two for one deal yeah. you got to buy two to get one kind of deal in yeah. some sense right because you're not going to be fully maximized no that's correct. and that's just kind of the way it goes it's just the way it is okay yeah. I mean I'm I'm just I mean at they this. have to go just to confirm they I mean they can only do it right in front of their store in between well, their boundaries right because. We, there was an empty space next to Luigi's, so he just... Like Lily's. Well, there is a provision in there yeah, that if you get an affidavit it. signed by the adjacent business owner... Okay, you okay. So there you there. go. But, I, uh, but again, I think as Daniel said, the recommendation is there's not going to be an enclosure of tents. Yes. Yep. It's going to go back primarily because it's, again, going to be April to October. Yep. Um, you can put up an umbrella under certain criteria or things, you know, to keep you out of the sun, but... Um, Okay. okay. I, I think people love the igloos, but even when it wasn't the pandemic, so uh, okay. But so, what's our our action is to recommend? This recommend is a recommendation. This, forward. this is a recommendation of the city commission, and ultimately, this is going to be their their decision. What I will add is all those on Main Street are going to have to come up in the next few weeks anyways because they're going to re resurface Main, so they're all going to have to disappear uh, through that construction project. So 
um, those notices. I think I copied everyone yeah. on that before, so those will all be coming out. Um, the recommendation to the city commission will be to let those that are out there stay past April 1st, because that's the deadline that expires now under the COVID uh, temporary use permits. Let those stay past April 1st and give you 30 days to either remove them or apply to get an approval. If you do neither, the city will come out and take them down out of the way. So okay. you'll have to do something to move I guess it. my question on this, though, too, is let's say we don't know what COVID's going to look like in the winter, and maybe we have a, another surge. I don't want to say that, but um, would we ever be able to reevaluate this recommendation? Or well, I think if we... there's another emergency order, and again, it's... it's well, it's, not an emergency order. I guess, yeah, I get it. Okay. That's how we would solve it, is through an emergency order. I gotcha. All right. The people can get vaccinated now to choose to be safe. So, yeah. Okay. The problem is the tents, the tents weren't highly utilized, and they're still an eyesore, even in the peak of, uh, you know, for the winter side. I'm not with that, but there have been some, some uh, good business, there has been some businesses that have done it the right way with, igloos and not being eyesores and things like that so i would hate to yep, create that. something to punish them when when people were utilizing those quite a bit so all right okay so uh, there, is a resolution. there is a resolution i'm sorry i didn't see it there is a suggested resolution here I'll make a motion to accept the resolution. Motion by Director Keith. I'll uh, second that. Second by Director London. Any further discussion on this? Okay. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. Item number 14 is reports. Those are all informational items, unless you want us to go through something. The only one I'd point out is. Obviously, a rose pest solution who does your road and control program down is bumping the monthly fee slightly, but it's only a couple of dollars. So, unless there's questions or I, I have one question comment. We last meeting we brought up the parking conversation just to make sure that we put it on the record or something along mm -hmm. those lines, and I, I just don't know how we can take that to the next step because, um, you know, I mean the the buzz of you know, the, the parking still is a major complaint at, at the retail and all locations. And um, I just want to really make sure that this is getting addressed at the city level because right now I don't see that it's getting addressed personally. You know what I mean? Like I can say that maybe they've heard it, but I, I really want to make sure we have to talk about this because it is not going well. It's a continued disruption to my everybody's business is downtown. It's and so, from a, and it, it is I mean my I mean, my wife won't come downtown anymore because it is just they went from such a good system to now such a bad system. And and, and, I, and I'm not saying I, I'm whatever. I will, it is what it is, right? right? And it's not say, it's not functional, it's not working and it is a problem. And, and I will it's say, say if we're not doing listening tours in the residential forums which is where some of this surfaces as well the back end drive, the back end parking on Washington is also a huge issue with everybody even I mean people are getting the finger and you know they're getting blasted for trying to park back and park because people don't realize that's what they have to do now so even though you can put up a million signs and you can say it a million and one ways i i tend to agree that i go into the parking structures because i don't want to deal with trying to figure out the new system and that's and that's a majority of people i talk with that live here in the city it's just difficult. Well, short of making some resolution, that would you want? I, I can try to invite the people that are running. The, I'd love to get a meeting with them and have. Well, I just have them come or, here and you can have a conversation. That'd with That'd be great. I, I would love the opportunity I mean, I, to yeah, see where it's going. And yeah, I, I'm looking for something that I can feed to the public that's positive. That I can say, hey guys, hey, there is something coming. You know, I have to give them better hope because right now they're like, eh, I got new workspace coming somewhere else. 
Right. It, at least you can hear. That would be amazing. It's okay. driving customers away. Okay. Let's start there and see where we go, and maybe we can have a conversation with Mr. Brake and. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. There. I just I really appreciate that. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Thanks. I have a motion by Director Rossman. Second by Director Yesman. Thank you. Wow. Don't forget about this. <laughs> hey, take some. I've taken some. Call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we are adjourned. <laughs>